Okay, so this is a rules demo. Um, and because uh, the, uh, the, the demo machine is... Command plus. Command plus. Command. Yeah? How are we feeling? So let's just call this. Uh, sorry about um, the small setup here, everybody. So what I'm doing is um, uh, getting a quick, quick Drupal uh, install of uh, Drupal using Drush, and this is actually this is useful because we get to look at what the rules um, dependencies are. C tools is one, entity and entity token is one. Um, we want rules here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in rules bonus pack just as well, uh, and some other ones. Module filter. So while while Drush is getting us a Drupal install with those modules. Um, can I just get a show of hands? Who, who has used rules in a Drupal project? Okay, lots of people has, have used rules. Um, I guess the one, the, the project that I've seen that uses it a lot is Drupal Commerce. So keep your hands up if it's Drupal Commerce that you've used rules in. Only Drupal Commerce. Okay. All right, a couple of hands. Um, who uses it to to create business logic in their Drupal application? Oh, heaps of people. Oh, this is going to be really boring. OK. OK, redirect, redirect hooks. Um, I guess by business logic, I mean um, where you're doing conditionals or you're sort of um, uh, you know, taking some data and processing that data and then spitting out some output or, or changing, the, changing the user journey in a website um, using rules as opposed to maybe creating a module. Send to send emails, to create nodes, to do all these kinds of things. So about half of the crowd is going to be really bored by this presentation. The other half, um, yes. Do we get a time warning? Is someone going to give me a time warning? Is there going to be a bell? Someone throws something at me. Okay. So I'm really, oh, always allow. We've got natural scrolling on, which is my nemesis. Sorry, I've got some neuroses, which mean when I use Drupal, I have to turn certain things off. I'm really, I'm really sorry about that, everyone. Okay, so configuration. We don't even have rules enabled, so I don't know what's going on. Ah, oh, rules UI, thank you. So, configuration, workflow, rules. I'm going to do a hello world for rules. Um, bigger? Bigger. I don't know what the buttons do. How do I make it bigger? Apple F? I don't know. Is this still working? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to do the hello world of rules. And um, something, I, I didn't use rules for ages, and I wasn't sure what it did. I was confused that it, I thought it might have been something to do with actions and triggers from Drupal 6. Um, but it's, it's, it's not. It's something else. Um, and what struck me as I started to use rules was that it kind of, the things that you can do with rules kind of correspond with hooks in Drupal. So any place where you might be writing some logic that you're, where you're using a hook, like in a, in a module, <clears throat> rules really gives you the same opportunity a lot of the times to do the same kind of things that you'd be doing on a, a hook in it or a hook something something. You guys know what they are. They're, they're, they happen all throughout the bootstrap. So let's just do... Uh, Let's do what I'm considering like the hello, the hello world of rules.
And as you can see here, this is, this is kind of when, when I think about the event, this is where I go into some kind of hook. Something, it's like some stage of the Drupal bootstrap process and I want to do something at some stage of that whole bootstrap. So for the hello world, I'm just going to do it when Drupal is initializing. So every time Drupal bootstraps, we want to do something. That's the event. Conditions. Now this is where, this is where rules has a bunch of pre-existing kind of uh, condition elements or frameworks or whatever. You can write your own. So you can, you can write your own custom ones um, to put in here. Whenever, if you don't see anything that you'd like to use, usually what I do is just hit data comparison and, you know, start to think about um, data comparison is a great way to do any kind of custom um, conditional logic on that bootstrap. So what I want to do is I want to do a hello world. Actually, do you know what? No, let's, let's keep going. I'm going to do a hello world on the home page. Um, and so what rules gives me here is I, I need to compare some data. So I might throw this out to the crowd. What, what kind of data I, would I need to compare to determine if I was on the home page? URL? All right, let's see, let's see if rules has this. Site, site URL, well, site current page, current page path or URL. Let's do current page path. Thank you, Margie. The operator, we've got a whole bunch of operators here, equals or is one of. Um, I think on a fresh install, the front page is node. Stop me if I'm wrong. And so now we've got the event, we've got the condition, and now we've, we want to do an action. So when we go to the front page, when Drupal bootstraps and there's, a use, there's someone on the front page, we want to do something. So I want to write hello world back to the user. And the easiest way to do that, I think, is with a, a, messi a message. <clears throat> hello world. Uh, let's not repeat the message because that's... That's really annoying. All right. Uh, Chrome. So there we go. We've got an anonymous user. They've gone to the home page. Drupal has said, OK, let's, well, we're initializing Bootstrap. Is it the home page? Yes. OK, send someone a message. If we go to a different page, we don't get the message. If we go to the home page, we get the message. Any questions so far? All right, let's, let's keep going. That's not very, uh, hello world isn't very useful. I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen it used on, on a site for a while. <laughs> but let's, let's keep persevering here. And, and I, I, had, I, had a, I had a user set up for this, so this might be slightly annoying. Account settings. A lot of sites have information about their different users. And so, <clears throat> let's see where this goes. I need, I need a widget. Text. Did I just completely squash that? No, I didn't, okay. We just want to let people register. And when people register, we better make sure that this is required. OK, so someone goes to the site. They can. create an account, and they can say who they are. So it's Peter. OK. So 
great. So now I've got an account on this site, and this is a good opportunity to show how a site might want to you know, take some user input, do some logic on it, and actually you know, have some kind of outcome. So let's go back to our rules here and see if we can do something to make this happen. First of all, let's log out from, as this user. Let's turn off our annoying existing rule. So, disable. All right. Now we're gonna, let's just make sure it doesn't, it's not still there. Okay, it's gone. <coughs> Say hello to user. So we're gonna, Again, it's not, it's not much different from Hello World, but we're going to use rules to grab some input from a field, grab a value from a field, and use that value to do something, to print a message. Um, and we don't want to do it every time Drupal bootstraps, because that would be annoying for, for the user, for the, for the site to say, hello, Peter, hello, Peter, hello, Peter, every time that you looked at a page. So we want it to make a bit more sense. So we want to look for something that's going to, an appropriate time for the site to say hello to me when I log in. I'm looking. Does anyone want to shout out anything? Bingo. OK. So the event, when, when a user logs in, we want to do something. The conditions. Don't need conditions. Whenever any user logs in, we want to do this thing. It doesn't, it's not like if it's Peter, say hello. If it's not Peter, say, you know, get out of here. What are you doing? But we could, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to be completely equal opportunity about saying hello to everyone. And again, we've got an action we want to send. <laughs> I mean, we can, we can do some of these things, but we won't log out. What we'll do, we'll stick to our, our trusty friend, show a message. And again, <laughs> we're going to say hello, but here we're going to use the power of tokens and rules to see if we can say hello to this person's first name. So when you've got rules, uh, enabled, you get, you get this really um, familiar sort of token browser. I'm not seeing what I want. Here we go. Oh, yes, I'm seeing what I want now. So here we've got clever entity token module. It gives us the field that's attached to that entity. So really... Um, you know, when Drupal bootstraps, there's a whole bunch of things that the system sort of has access to. When you load a, when you load a node, you know, there's, there's a node available. Um, whenever a user's logged in, you know, the, there's all this kind of user information available. And so um, entity token and, um, and, yeah, entity token can take advantage of whatever's really available on the page or whatever Drupal has in play at that point in time. So let's cop, we've got our little token. And we'll put our token in there. Who hasn't used tokens? Don't be afraid. Honesty time now. No, everyone's used tokens. OK, excellent. Um, I guess this, um, uh, the reason I, I ask that is because I think a lot of uh, site building and this kind of sophisticated Drupal site building depends on tokens. And, um, and, and so, uh, yeah, it's important. If you're sort of beginning as a site builder, I mean, tokens is this, I mean, it's this amazing kind of wilderness, but a, um, a rich wilderness. All right, so we're saying, hello, Peter. It's a status message, or is it, is it a warning? <laughs> Let's make it more fun. Be careful, Peter. <laughs> it's a warning. Let's not repeat it. OK, we've got our rule. It's in action. Let's see if it works. 
What? Can anyone remember? Demo? Was it demo? Just making sure everyone's awake. Okay, no, just kidding. Yeah. Drupal. It's like the site, you know, this, there, there's, it, it's really, it's a trivial kind of piece of user interaction, but it's very meaningful from a user experience point of view. Um, and so I guess I think that rules, you know, gives site builders this sort of playground to really tweak the user experience um, and, and also do some pretty sophisticated workflows for user journeys through a site that might not necessarily be what Drupal gives you out of the box. Um, so yeah, hopefully that, that just gives a bit of an insight into rules. Uh, has anyone got any questions? Ryan Cross. when you're trying to debug complex interactions between rules? Good question. Very good question. Uh, when not using like a debugger? Well, you, I generally find you can't, uh, unless you're going to step through your entire Drupal instance, yeah. uh, you can't really use a debugger in that regard. Sure. You can't kind of isolate um, your code in the same way that you would with just a module, which is... I, at the moment, I don't have no. I, I I don't have any good ways of debugging that. There's something that I've tried to debug, which is rules lets you create um, conditions. Like in rules, you can create these custom conditionals, and C tools and Page Manager has a way where in the C tools Page Manager conditionals sort of feature, um, if there is a pay, if there is a rules component that's a conditional component. C, C tools knows about that in terms of a conditional, but as to how you use that, I've got no idea. So yeah, if I, I haven't been able to debug that particular issue. No more questions? Sure. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Th thanks. Thanks, Boris.